For people who need to grab a quick bite for breakfast, the invention of the toaster pastry in the 1960s was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Finally, the toaster could be used for more than toasting bread. And the toaster pastry was definitely a sweet alternative. The toaster pastry retains its sweetness during toasting. The syrupy filling and frosting don't melt out and into the toaster. It's all because of the ingredients and how they come together. At this factory, they start by making an organic pastry. The blender operator loads dry ingredients like rice bran into the blender, followed by a sugar syrup and molasses. It's the molasses that gives the pastry a brownish color. He adds organic palm shortening and organic granulated sugar. The flour and water are piped into the blender barrel. Spiraling mixers blend and knead the dough to the desired consistency. Next, it's into a hopper that feeds the dough between two rollers. They squeeze and flatten the dough into a sheet that's about two centimeters thick. A conveyor moves the toaster pastry dough forward to sets of larger rollers. They apply serious pressure to roll the dough much thinner. Wheels at the sides fold back the dough as the width expands. A dusting of flour to the rollers keeps things from getting too sticky. Coming off the final rollers, the thickness of the dough has been reduced to one-sixth of a centimeter. At another station, they've whipped up a batch of cherry pomegranate jam. The jam is hardy and thick so it won't run as nozzles pump the jam onto the rolled pastry sheet. Each toaster pastry receives three strings of jam. This depositor system fills 10 tarts at a time. It works out to 390 tarts a minute. A second sheet of dough heads towards the jam-filled one. En route, a spiked roller punches holes for venting steam during baking. Without these holes, the pressure would build and the toaster pastries would explode. The top sheet of pastry now merges with the bottom one. The conveyor belts move at exactly the same speed, so the top pastry lands in perfect alignment on the jam-filled one. A cylinder with a brass grid pattern bears down on the pastry to compress it between the jam fillings. This forms pockets of jam. A cylindrical blade slices the pastry into individual tarts. A device pulls off the side trimmings. The toaster pastries travel through a 46 meter long convection oven heated to 150 degrees Celsius. The operator keeps a close watch for leaking jam that would be a sign of bad seals in the pastry pockets. He rejects any with leaks. He also keeps an eye on the color as the pastries brown. They shouldn't be too dark or too light. Fresh out of the mixer, the pink frosting now flows onto a revolving belt that spreads it on the toaster pastries at just the right thickness. They've added a bit of starch to the icing. And it's this starch that allows the icing to harden and set so it won't melt and drip into the toaster during toasting. They sprinkle granulated colored sugar onto the toaster pastries. They call this topping the crunchlets. The crunchlets add both flavor and texture to the pastry. Once cooled, the toaster pastries transfer from one conveyor to another. A breaker roller snaps them at the crimp line to separate them into groups of two. The completed tarts head towards the packaging line. An operator does a visual inspection as they pass by. Mechanical arms push the tarts into aluminum wrapping. Hot rollers seal and cut the wrap at the ends. This wrapping preserves the tarts for eight months. No preservatives needed. Suctioning arms grab and open cartons to accept the foil wrap toaster pastries. It takes about an hour to manufacture a box of toaster pastries. And now it's time for a toast.